Hey, I'm Seth with Land House. This is my 14 by 20 tool shed that I just built. I've got solar panels up on the hill and wire run to the building. So now it's time to get the electronics installed. I've got a Midnight Classic 150 uh, charge controller. I've got an inverter, solid state relay, this diehard platinum battery, I've got breaker box, a switch, and a whole bunch of wiring that is in here already. So let's go ahead and mount these electronics and get things going. Step number one is to mount a three quarter inch piece of plywood here. I just got a couple of Torx head screws. The first thing I want to mount on my piece of plywood is the Midnight Solar Classic 150. This is way too much charge controller for what I need here out in the off-grid shed, but I already had it for my hydro install, and so we're just going to be using this because I've already got it. You could get by with something that is somewhere around uh, $30 to $40, and this right here is somewhere around $700. Way too much. Way, way, way too much. Okay, in order to access the mounting location, I've got to pull the front cover off of here. Okay, I can simply remove the cover. And I also have to squeeze the display here. So when you pull this off, there's two things you have to do. Remove the piece of paper, and then also pull out this little tab that holds the battery. Okay, once that's done, you can put this front cover back on. Set that off to the side. All right, nothing too fancy. I'm just holding this into position here. The next item is a breaker, and this little cover comes off, and I'm going to be installing this right here so that I can easily get this disconnected from the outside power. I decided it would make more sense to have the breaker over here, and then I'll have my battery kill switch down below that. And that kind of isolates the input uh, to the batteries over here with the charge controller. And that way, my 300 watt inverter that I've had for years and never used can go right over here. And it doesn't really have any mounting brackets, so I'm just gonna use some of this metal plumber's tape and get that installed here. I'm thinking since it's got my output over here, I may just put it close to the edge so we can access those. Pretty important. Let's go ahead and get this in place here. Doesn't have to be on there super tight. So I'll have to use that right there to go to the next component, which is gonna be this solid state relay. This should help prevent the batteries from ever dropping low. So I'm gonna mount this right up here, but these get really hot. So I'm gonna use a couple of washers to kind of step out away from the wall a little bit. It's been a day or two because I forgot that I had to buy the cables for the battery. So I've got this switch here, which is just an on off switch that will isolate the battery from the Midnight Classic. And so I just want to be able to hook uh, one side of the battery and the other side here to this. So I'm just gonna loop that around and then put this nut back on here. The uh, switch here came from Amazon. I'll have a link to that in the description down below. The other side of this is gonna be another one of these cables. And this one is about a foot and a half long or so. And now I'm gonna be sure to put the back cover on here. And then I'm gonna use some of these short torque screws to get this piece locked down against our plywood. Just right over here towards the edge, should be fine. So like I said, this side is going to go onto the battery. And then this side will loop down up under here and go into the Midnight Solar Classic one. I know this lighting is kind of poor, but this side here of the Midnight Classic is the battery positive. So I'm gonna take the cord that we just, or the cable we just got cut down and slide it up under here and hopefully be able to get this 
installed. I have my black and red solar wire coming right here and I need to get this red wire into my breaker. And so I've already cut off about two foot here to be used from this breaker to the Midnight Classic. So I just want to strip off about a quarter inch of the sheathing here. Yeah, there we go. And now this actually can come off to make it a little bit easier. Stick the wire down into this hole and then make sure I've got the on position in the up direction. And then I can take my Phillips head screwdriver and just tighten down this screw. Okay, that seems to be in there pretty good. And now I can take my other little section of wire here and do the same. Strip off about a quarter inch. Sheathing only grabs hold of that stuff. Uh, once again, go up through the bottom hole and then come around to the bottom side of this breaker. And now I just need to get this breaker installed here. Okay, very good. And now with that red wire, I'm going to sneak back under here where the others are. And the uh, positive is gonna be on the far side here. Okay, and then lastly, I want to take the black wire around here and do the same. Sneak that up. And then it's going to go into the one here yeah, that's close to the middle. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the battery. I don't have the switches on yet, so won't have any issues with this uh, turning on anything. The inverter has regular US plug on it here. And so I have actually wired up a new plug with my red, black, and white wires coming out. The red's going to be the hot, the black's going to be the neutral, and then the white is going to be the ground. So the red comes and is split by this solid state relay here. So what's going to happen is a signal will come out of the classic and it will trigger this relay to say turn on or turn off so that the AC side of this whole system will either prevent the battery from being used or use the battery. So anyway, um, so. Red wire comes in, goes into this side of the relay, then comes over here to this side, and then down. And then I have the other two wires here. So I'm actually going to just put a little junction box in and wire those in there. And that's what's going to be attached to my two wires that feed all of the lights and receptacles here in the shed. So let's go ahead and put this box in and then wire these together. All right, I've already got the top punched out of this, so I'm just gonna move it to about right here. And now all of my wiring is just gonna go through the top here, and I'm going to be attaching these two wires to this box. I'm gonna make sure I leave plenty of extra wire so I can come back and make changes later if I need to. So you've seen this before. I'm just gonna strip this stuff down and use some regular old wire nuts to uh, get everything put together. In order to turn on the solid state relay, I'm gonna use auxiliary one here on the Midnight Classic. And so I've got some little tiny uh, black and red wires that I'm going to wire up here. So I'm getting this little red wire in here. So there we go. Little tiny black and red wires. In order to get auxiliary one to work, I need to swap over these two jumpers here. So they are definitely tiny. All right, there we go. So you can look this up on your manual, but they're just on this side over here. Now I'm gonna use a screwdriver and put these tiny wires in here. I'm gonna use the red one for the positive side here. Time to get the front panel back on the classic here. Gonna clip in the front display cord and then get this piece screwed back on. 
So I actually just saw that this is a classic 200. I thought it was a 150, but anyway, doesn't matter in this application. Now it's time to turn stuff on. First, I'm gonna turn on the battery that will allow the Midnight Classic to power on. The menu has popped up. I'm gonna select solar here. Now I'm gonna to go to the menu and I want to go over to AUX, push enter there. And I want to go into AUX1. I'm gonna make sure that it's on diversion. We go to volts and I want it to uh, go up to 11.5. Let's do 11.8. And then over here on the high volts, I'm going to knock it down to uh, turn back on at 12.8. Uh, okay, 11.8, 12.8. I'm going to click the time button and I'm going to up this to 5. And then the hold, I'm also going to do five on that as well. Push enter on that. It's been a lot of work so far, but I think we're ready to test this out. Let me walk you through the system real quick and we will flip the switch on. Our solar power comes from that port over there. Red wire goes to the breaker, which then goes to the Midnight Classic. Black wire just goes around straight to the Classic. That goes down, oh, a uh, switch as well. That goes down to the battery and charges that. Uh, then we have the auxiliary port number one comes around here and turns on this relay. And then we've got the battery connection to the inverter, which comes around here and uh, has a junction to our wiring around the shed. So I think we're ready to turn this on. We've got six watts coming in because it's a very cloudy day. All right, here we go. All right, that has got a little bit of a noise where the fan turned on. Now I've wired up one, oh, never mind, it's already on. <laughs> I guess my switch is in backwards. <laughs> oh well. Um, so yeah, there's our uh, power off grid in the shed here. Really exciting. Wonder how fast that 10 watt is gonna bring this down. So we're at 12.4 uh, now. So hopefully this battery will charge up to 14 something pretty quick whenever the um, sun is out. But uh, So there you go. We've got a 10 watt bulb running really well here in the shed. Super exciting. Let's go ahead and flip our switch back here. I looked a little closer and it says no and foe at the bottom. So I gotta swap that around. <laughs> um, here's my 30 watt that I want to try out my receptacles. Let's go ahead and plug this thing up here. Yep, nice. So that is working just fine. So that's the end of the run. I'm assuming that everything else is gonna work just fine. Um, let's go over here and try this one here. Yep, got it. So, very cool. Those two at least work which I'm gonna assume everything else will as well. So I've got more receptacles up there to put more of those 10 watt bulbs or 10 watt lights. And that will bring plenty of light here for just doing typical stuff in the tool shed. I can already tell I'm probably gonna to want to add another battery and also get an inverter that is not so loud. That one has a fan that runs all the time. Now I may go ahead and put all of this into a little tiny box that has a lid on it. And uh, that'll at least keep things quiet in here, but uh, we're still at 12.4, um, no watts coming in. So anyway, I'll have to do an experiment and see how long that battery will last with the lights that I have running in here. Well, it's cold out here and I at least have this up and running. Whenever I'm not down here, I'm gonna turn off that inverter so it's not just powering through all the time. And I'm gonna go do some research on inverters that are less than 100 bucks and hopefully won't have that fan noise running all the time. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got some comments, write that down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye. It's the next day and we have full sun coverage here on the panels. 
let's uh, go step into the shed and see what kind of power we're generating down here. 14.4 volts and I'm seeing anywhere from 25 to 30 watts coming in. Let's go ahead and flip our lights on. See if that uh, watts goes up whenever we're not absorbing the maximum there. So we got our 10 watts going. And now we're pulling 46 or so watts from those panels. And the battery is still at 14.4. So yeah, we'll be able to run a whole lot more off of this than uh, that one light. Just plugged in a 30 watt. So now we're pulling 40 watts from the battery here. And we've got 80, 75 to 80 watts coming in from the panels. And uh, it's maintaining the battery at full. So yeah, whenever the sun's out, we could run a lot of lights off of this thing. Now I've been looking at inverters that would be a bit quieter. I'll probably look for a two or 3000 watt that would never turn the fan on because we wouldn't ever be running anything that big from here. Um, but anyway, just wanted to show that the sun is uh, producing all the power that this battery needs to stay full right now. Now, as soon as I cut these lights, it will probably cut back down to uh, only drawing 20 or so. Let's see, yeah, there's 25 to 30 watts 